precipitating PTSD. Well, right. I mean, PTSD is is predominantly uh, a, a problem of one particular brain region, the amygdala, and so so a lot of the problem with making drugs is to make something that affects one part of the brain and not the other. So. Uh, you know, basically the same way that addiction is learning gone awry in the reward circuitry, PTSD is learning gone awry in the fear circuitry. Uh, and targeting that fear circuitry specifically turns out to be a bit of a challenge because it may not be unique at a molecular level. So it may be something that's harder to target with a drug. That, that's the issue. Yeah. In other words, if, if, if the way to prevent PTSD is to prevent a learning-like phenomenon in the first fear circuitry, then you've got to come up with a way to prevent that, but not prevent a learning-like phenomenon where you want it to be able to learn. Yeah, what I'm thinking about is um, a very sophisticated form of neurotin, let's say, mm-hmm. which, you know, from personal experience, I know... Um, is very good at treating the symptoms of PTSD after the fact. Mm -hmm. But it stands to reason that if you were taking it before the fact, um, maybe you wouldn't have to be taking it after the fact or (laughs) as much anyway. Mm -hmm. What what would you say would be uh, the major, you know, your hope that people take away from this book, um, both, well, let's separate it into the general public and then to um, other scientists. You know, your hope um, that this book will lead to... Well, uh, my hope is that uh, for the general public, this, 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 that, that this book will lead to an appreciation that our humanity can only be understood in terms of evolution. That uh, our brain, which confers our humanity upon us, is an evolved structure that has all these quirks that give us the texture of our human experience. That's what I hope people will will take away. If someone asks someone else at a cocktail party what's Linton's book about, that's I hope some variant of that is what can come out. Uh, in terms of scientists, you know, I don't know. I guess what I would hope uh, is that uh, I can is that uh, is that what scientists will look at this book and say, you know, it's possible to write a science book for a general audience that uh, that a general audience can 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 find engaging and entertaining, but which uh, doesn't have to be from the purpose of the from the perspective of the scientist dumbed down to the point where all the important information is taken out. Uh, What I'm hoping is that more scientists will really attempt to do this hard job of, uh, of, of, of writing science books that are engaging for the general public. And it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. Yeah, it certainly is. And we need more people making the effort to do it so that, you know, the general public can, um, I would guess this is your perception that you know we're a little weak in the appreciation for the sciences. Well, I, th- I, th- I think we as a society are, and I think we, uh, I think, I think scientists share a lot of uh, uh, deserve a lot of the b- blame for that because we haven't, as a group, done a very good job of 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 making scientists interesting, making science interesting for a general audience. Uh, and I think part of that is, is is some of the choices that we as scientists make when we try to communicate. Most of the science books I read are kind of written in a way that it doesn't sound like a human talking. Right. Uh, the science books I like the most, and what I tried to copy and emulate when I wrote my own, was I wanted to sound like a conversation with me. Yes, exactly. And when I read, when I read somebody I really admire, like Olivia Judson, who's a terrific... 
uh, uh, science writer or, or Matt Ridley, who's a terrific science writer. You can hear their voice in the book, and you can have that connection, and it makes it a lot more engaging and interesting. And too many of the science books that I read don't have that, and uh, so I think we as scientists have to do, have to do a better job of getting things across. It seems sometimes that maybe scientists like to flex their gray matter like um, bodybuilders like to flex their muscles. Well, right, and there's a place for that in scientific conferences. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was good. Uh, uh, your, your, um, your influences, your mentors, the people who inspired you, um, who, who might they be? Well, I would say one of the, the people who has uh, inspired me the most is uh, Solomon Snyder, a pioneer in neuropharmacology who was for many years the, uh, the director of my department here at Johns Hopkins. And he was inspiring not just for his life in science, but uh, because he has, uh, has al also written a number of really terrific, uh, very accessible, good, fun books uh, about uh, about uh, neuropharmacology for a general public, starting in the 1970s and continuing uh, to uh, to recent years. Well, so I would say he's. Recent one. Uh, I believe his most recent one was called Brainstorming, and it was the story about how his lab uh, discovered the receptor for morphine and the endorphins. Uh, uh, it was telling the, the 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 story the story of that behind the scenes, and it's a wonderful book. And you said the last name is Snyder. S N Y D E R Solomon. Yes, he is uh, he is one of the uh, one of the giants of uh, of modern neuroscience, and uh, fortunately uh, he's been a neighbor of mine here at at Johns Hopkins for the last fifteen years. Have you ever uh, crossed paths with uh, Kandel? Uh, I have. I, I, I know Eric Kandel quite well, yes. Yes. I mean, we both work on the same general topic, which is the storage of memory in the brain. That's what, that's what his laboratory does, and that's what my laboratory does as well. Uh, and he is also a very engaging writer. Uh, he wrote a book about memory together with Larry Squire that was published by Scientific American Library that, uh, that, is, uh, that is a lot of fun and, and very good. He also writes great textbooks. He, 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 together with uh, his colleagues from Columbia University, have written the classic medical text in the field called Principles of Neuroscience. Yeah, yes. that's the one um, we used in graduate school, and I was just blown away by how much fun I had reading it. There was something about... Uh, he has an interesting story, and I'm not remembering what it is. Well, he has a very interesting personal story. He he has written an autobiography uh, uh, recently uh, called "In Search of Memory," and it tells the story yes. about his his growing up in Vienna yeah. and his flight uh, from Nazism and his family settling in New York City, and then goes on to tell the story of his scientific career. Uh, and it's a uh, and it's a very interesting book. He has a very he is a good writer, and he covers the history of neuroscience well. And he has a very uh, uh, compelling and interesting uh, personal narrative to go with it. And there, did he didn't he have some kind of uh, memory impairment? No. No, not to my knowledge. Okay, I get to blame that on sleep deprivation. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Um, is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to um, share with our listeners? Well, I think we've uh, I think we've been around the bases. Uh, so uh, I think at this point I'm I'm happy to sign off and uh, before you and, do, and wish your listeners about, best wishes. Before you do, how about if you um, direct people to your uh, website? Which oh, I'd be I'll vouch for. It's just uh, it's a great website. Well, thank you. Uh, that's very kind. My website is called Accidental Mind, all running together as one word. dot org. 
and uh, there's uh, there are free chapters there, and there are even uh, illustrations from the book rendered as note cards. Yes, so I was just looking. Print them out on your printer, fold them up, and mail them to your friends. Uh, and they're there free for the taking. So uh, uh, please uh, please do stop by and uh, accidentalmind.org and, and, and see what's there. I'd appreciate that. And you're blogging, so people and get to people get to uh, add their two cents. Uh, absolutely. Well, listen. Uh, thank you very much. This was a this was a blast. And I really it was my pleasure. Your time. Thank you, and best wishes. Okay. Bye now. Bye-bye.